Hello and welcome to PTI's educational webinar mini-series. Today we're going to talk about manual visual inspection. So first let's talk about package integrity. This is the characteristic of a package, its ability to prevent the product loss as well as maintain product sterility for the product's shelf life. Um, it, it's something that is dynamic too, so if we're measuring for package integrity today, uh, we, you may not have it two weeks from now based on what the package has endured during that, that process or that life cycle. But really that's, that's the definition of package integrity, and we often look at, at that classification in terms of the maximum allowable leakage limit, or MALL, M-A-L-L. -L. And the MALL, this is a figure that is set based on what is the appropriate level of leakage for a certain package. All package formats leak, it's just a matter of how much is it allowed to leak so that it still does not uh, produce a product loss issue or a failure of product sterility. So with very small defects, or uh, with liquid fill products, very small defects still pose a significant risk to the product sterility. In this graph here, you can see how defects below 10 microns still pose a very high percentage, uh, high percentage risk of container closure uh, integrity failure, steril sterility failure. And studies uh, as late as 2007 have, have matched this level of uh, microbial ingress as it relates to a helium leak size. So it gives you an idea, very small leak sizes still uh, are very critical to uh, pharmaceutical products. As you move towards a medical device where you typically have no moisture inside the package but it's just a dry class 3 medical device or component, what leak size is critical to the failure uh, or the to patient safety, that, that's uh, still up for debate, but what's clear is that sterility with very small leak sizes can be a, uh, a, a factor that's put at risk. So as that relates to the medical device industry and many other industries that still operate using manual visual inspection, this is a method that's very common, it's very simple, but it's highly subjective. Not all visual defects are actually physical, they just are visually apparent defects, and not all physical defects are visually apparent. And so there's actually a separation in, in terms of what uh, you can detect uh, visually and physically. And really what matters to the product sterility, the product uh, shelf life, and um, that package's performance is the physical nature of that package. And we'll talk more about how manual visual inspection does not uh, live up to the requirements of many high-risk package applications. It really comes down to the fact that manual visual inspection is highly subjective and is also subject to a variety of biases. So there is a, a, uh, an attempt in, in some industries to codify quality. So in the food industry, defects were often classified as either minor, major, or critical. Now, if there is a defect in the barrier of the uh, package, that's a, a critical defect. It's something that is going to cause a complete failure of that product. And what we have to get is that all critical defects are physical by nature. They are not visual by nature. Some of them can be visually detected, but certainly not all. And in that case, we're missing a, a significant portion of critical defects if you're only relying on visual inspection. Now, there's a variety of biases that, that definitely go with a, a manual visual inspector. So the Hawthorne effect is how you perform when you know that you're being observed or if there's someone observing the process. So this is especially valid if you're validating a blue dye ingress method or manual visual inspection method operators that are uh, being put to the test or as part of that validation process are certainly going to amp up their performance and the, the amount of focus they have as a, a result of the, the Hawthorne effect. Uh, confirmation bias is if others see that this is um, a, a package is okay, having a second or third manual visual inspector right behind them usually does not help because they're simply confirming what the first and the second inspector has seen, and so they, they see their role as less valid. 
So adding multiple uh, manual visual inspectors certainly does not provide the same effect of performance. And selection bias, detection bias, these are all uh, biases where an operator might say, hey, I know that the defect is always happening at the beginning of the shift. So that's when they actually look for the defect and they will not look for those defects elsewhere. Or if they typically see defects in a certain area of the package, they will not look to the other side of the package to see if there are other defects in that area. So it really, a bias can really drive the way that a manual visual inspector performs their task. Now this is data from a, uh, a year's worth of FDA recalls and it shows where the, the source of that, uh, that recall issue, what it eventually was attributable to, whether it was the supplier's issue, a design issue with the package design, a process related issue, or personnel that the, the personnel was not trained correctly. And so you can see the different types of package defects and how they fit into uh, a different uh, or had a, a different uh, factor that drove that recall. And when you look at uh, the personnel uh, graph, 100% of defects that are, were attributable, attributable to personnel was a seal related defect. And what that means is manual visual inspection is used widely to investigate seal quality and 100% of the personnel related defects were focused on seal related defects. So it's pretty telling. It shows us really that manual visual inspection simply just doesn't live up to the task. Now, generally speaking, the ASTM test method F1886 for manual visual inspection says that an operator can pick up a, a defect of approximately 75 microns 60 to 100 percent of the time and with that that certainly is a wide range of performance capability by an operator but that being said it's it's not completely accurate either as an operator spends time on task the ability to detect a 75 micron defect goes down dramatically now, some medical device operations will actually stack one manual visual inspector behind the next, behind the next, hoping for an increased or improved performance. But still, if you add all the compounding effects, the bias of having multiple operators, and the, the fact that an operator's performance goes down with time on task, having an 80% detection capability per operator is very generous, and that's typically not the case. But even when you use an 80% as a probability, an operation will typically still be producing defects and sending them out the door. This was a study for uh, methylene blue where they spiked vials of methylene blue with a specific parts per million concentration of, of that dye ingredient. And it's to mimic essentially an operator's performance and ability to simply identify whether there's blue dye in the vials. Now, in this study, you can see that with different operators or inspectors that were given these vials, some of them performed at a greater level than others. So we can see inspector four and inspector three detected all the vials that had 0.2 parts per million in the vial of methylene blue, whereas operators one and two performed the worst. It shows you the wide range of visual performance, uh, the, the actual uh, ability of different inspectors to simply see a slight tint in color from one vial to the next. And that study uh, continued on with other inspectors at a, another uh, laboratory test site, again, uh, putting different parts per million concentration of dye in front of the operators and seeing whether they could properly in inspect those samples. Now, inspecting vials for blue dye also requires that the proper lighting be present, that the operator have enough time to inspect that vial, but even then it becomes more and more cumbersome as they're trying to do their role. And that, uh, that level of uh, process in, in, the inspection, in the inspector's role, their ability to sort of maintain that level of uh, capability goes down with every 10 minutes on task. So that, that study continued onward to compare 
manual visual inspection of the, the blue dye test to an actual quanti quantitative non-destructive test method, vacuum decay. Vacuum decay is a method that's listed in USP 1207 and is a re recommended deterministic test method. So when that test method is compared to the manual visual inspectors, you can see how vacuum decay detects all the defects properly, whereas uh, the with manual visual inspection, one good sample is rejected and only some of the five micron defects were actually detected with the uh, visual inspectors. At another facility, they reperformed that study, but with a more aggressive dyeing risk test. In this case, again, uh, all the good samples were detected as good. The defects were rejected by the vacuum decay. But because it was more aggressive, in fact, there was uh, a destructive nature to the test and blue dye was entering the container. But really, the, the operators, they are relying, were relying on these operators to apply their judgment and that lack of ability to do that time and time again, day in and day out, just is a festering failure of quality uh, beneath the surface that you may or may not know is causing an issue today, but eventually the inability of operators to properly identify defects will add up and causes some issues. So you can look at other more deterministic test methods instead of uh, inspecting a seal visually, uh, with a, a, a manual operator, you can inspect those seals using a technology such as ultrasound in a production line. And that you can do 100% online. Many of these technologies can be deployed 100% online, but most importantly, they provide reliable quantitative data that's going to tell you if your package has a critical to quality issue. So when looking at these non-destructive test methods, it's very important to, to weigh all the pros and cons why a deterministic method would be an improved performance level than a probabilistic test method. But just the reliability, the overall quality of data that gets produced from these technologies will give a higher level of foundation, a higher quality foundation for any production line and give you better data, better results to assure quality to the patient and to the end user. So with that, I thank you for joining us for this mini webinar, and we look forward to having you join us for more.